First of all, I just want to make sure we understand the different types of numbers and, and how they impact on graphs. And then secondly, we're going to look at some test points and how to solve those graphically, graphically and mathematically uh, to check the graphs that we're doing. Um, when you go to the internet, you'll find lots of little charts that help explain the different types of numbers that there are. And, and you know, if you're starting from the center here of this, I guess it's a Venn diagram. We've got a natural number, whole number, integer, rational, real, and irrational numbers. Uh, let's see if I can simplify that a little bit. Um, let's just focus on four. The natural, the whole number, the integer, and the real. Um, they have different symbols. So... Uh, here's the symbols for those. Uh, they are written a little more fancy, uh, typically, but uh, um, N, W, Z, and R. Natural numbers really are the, the first type of numbers that uh, the humans would have used. They would have been counting something, and, and they would have started counting at 1. So this is typically what we would use if you were counting. So let's say you're sitting on the side of the road, and you're counting how many cars drive by. You would start with the first car that drive by. You would say you've had one car, two cars, three cars, four cars, and so on. Um, initially, when humans started counting, they didn't use the number zero. Zero was not a number. Um, but um, since then, uh, we've added zero to a list. So the list that includes zero is a little different. So natural numbers, that's naturally how you would count, starts at one. Whole numbers starts at zero. And it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, onward to infinity. Integers. Um, are the same set of numbers, except that it also includes the negatives. So we could have negative numbers. Um, so it goes from basically from negative infinity to positive infinity, but, um, you know, it includes the zero. Uh, the real numbers are the ones that get kind of interesting. All of the integers are also real numbers. Okay. Just like all the natural numbers are whole numbers and all the whole numbers are, are integers and all the integers are real numbers, but what, what we have to think about with the real numbers is, is that between 0 and 1, there's a whole pile of more numbers. Like between 0 and 1, you could have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and so on. Well, then you could also have between um, 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, you could have 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 1, 5, and this continues on forever and ever. And these can be written as decimals and fractions and so on. And this could be um, um, represented in a different set of ways in terms of square roots and all kinds of other stuff. But for the most part, what we're saying is, is that natural numbers start at 1, and they are how you count. Whole numbers, it's the exact same as in natural numbers, just at 0. Integers include negatives, and real numbers are all of those plus all the numbers that are in between. And if you think, how many numbers are there between 0 and 1? There's millions and millions and millions. There's an infinite number of zeros between 0 and 1. We involve using these different types of numbers. So first of all, let's look at how it's going to be written. Um, frequently, teachers use a letter, a capital letter E, but really what it is, it's this symbol here, which means that it's part of a set. But a lot of teachers would just call this Y-E-R. Uh, frequently, the R is also written as a double letter here, um, in case you see it like that. But it just means the real numbers. So here we'll graph Y less than 2X plus 3. And we're going to make this uh, real numbers. So where do we go? We're going to start at the 3. And going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Graph my function. Uh, I see that it's a less than symbol. So I know that I don't use a solid line. I use my dashed line. There we go. And based on what we did previously, we know that we want to uh, shade under the line. So what we're saying is, is that it can be any value under the graph here. So any value down here works for X and Y. Okay. 
But now I've got the exact same function, but now I'm looking at that y has to be a natural number. Okay, so I'm going to start once again. I'm going to graph my function. I guess I don't need to look at the other one. It's right here. So I'm going to go to plus 3, and then I'm going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Here's my graph once again. So the graph itself is going to look identical up to here. But now I know that y has to be a natural number. And um, once again, natural numbers are like our counting numbers, the numbers we use when we count. So y has to be positive. So y can't be negative, and it can't be zero. So y could be there, or there, or there, or there. And so what we end up doing is we end up just putting dots on all the integer I shouldn't say the integer, the natural numbers for y. So it could be any of these dots. It can't be that dot there because it has to be less than that dot. Okay. So we would just make our graph. Instead of shading the graph, we just put a whole bunch of dots that meet the criteria. And this one was natural numbers. So natural numbers include... Um, one and up when we count. These math courses, questions like, does 3, negative 1 satisfy the function y equals 2x plus 3 or some kind of question? Um, and, and to me, this is just falls under the category of a test point. So we're going to look at this in terms of um, solving it graphically and mathematically. Let's start with the graph. So to find out if that satisfies that function, I'm going to graph that line. So um, let's, let's go to blue here. So I'm going to graph the function. Once again, it's the same function I did last sure. time. There is x at 3. I'm going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and draw my line. And so let's just make sure I got one here with the arrows. Okay. So it was a solid line because it was an equal sign. So it's not an inequality, it's an equality. So there's my function. And what does it mean when it asks, does it satisfy the function? For this to satisfy the function, because this is an equal sign, any spot along this graph on that line satisfies the function. So it has to be on there to satisfy the function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the point 3 comma negative 1. So 3 comma negative 1 is right there. Is that on the line? No. And I'm going to use the word false. I mean, you might say no, but I'm going to use the word false. Therefore, it does not satisfy the function. Let's do another one here. This one's uh, an inequality. So this time uh, I'm seeing a function of, get the right pen here. Okay, so I have a positive 6. And then, oh, this one's a 4x. So 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1 right there there. Okay. I notice because the inequality and there's no equal sign, it's going to be a, a dashed line. I'll go with this pink color this time. So here we go. So here is my line. And now I need to figure out, oh, it's a greater than sign. So I'm going to figure out where am I going to shade on this. And so it's greater than, so I'm shading over here. So if it's anywhere on this side of the line, it satisfies the function. Over here, it does not. And on the line, it does not. But greater than is over here. So this time, let's go with a blue point. Negative 2, positive 3 would be negative 2, positive 3 is right there. And that does, that is a true statement uh, if you, this is called, just so you know, these, these types of statements are known as Boolean, Boolean statements, true and false. This is a Boolean, uh, it's a true. Yes, it satisfies that function. 
So let's do the exact same questions we just did graphically, but let's see if we can solve them with some algebra. Um, when we have uh, a set of coordinates, remember this is the x value, this is the y value. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take this equation, this function, and throw the values of x and y into it. So what I'm going to have is instead of writing y, actually I can just rewrite it here. I'll say y equals 2, I'll put it in brackets, it's 2 times x plus 3. So now what I'm going to say is negative 1, that's the y, equals 2 times, and in brackets I'll put the x value, and the x value here was a 3. Okay, so there's all I'm doing is I'm just taking these two values here and putting them into my, my equation. So now I have negative 1 equals 6 plus 3. Negative 1 equals 9. Well, hopefully you'll recognize that that's false. That is a false statement. Okay, so based on what I call a Boolean uh, argument, that is not true. So does it satisfy the equation? No, it does not, because this is not a true statement. Okay, well, we know this one should work, so let's just try it here. So I'm going to say y greater than 4 times x plus 6. Once again, I'm going to use the value of x and the value of y. So y is 3. And then I'm going to say greater than 4 times a value plus 6. And we're going to put the value of negative 2. Oops, won't switch colors. Green. There we go. Negative 2. Okay. So let's take a look. And so now I'm saying that 3 is greater than 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 6, and 3 greater than negative 2, and 3 is a greater number than negative 2, so this is a true statement. So does that satisfy the function? Yes, it does. Okay, so we solved it graphically, now we solved it algebraically. Let's see how we can use this to solve some problems. Next, we're going to look at um, a test point with a system of equations, and I'll use the same function, uh, set of functions and equations, uh, to solve it both graphically and algebraically. So I'm going to graph um, 2x minus 3y less than 8. So um, 2x, let's see, so that's going to be 2 times x is 8, so x is 4 doing that first equation right here, and then negative 3, uh-oh, negative 3y is 8, y equals 8 over negative 3, which is roughly negative 2 and 2 thirds, so negative 2 and 2 thirds right about there, and now I'm going to draw my graph, and it's a less than symbol, so we go here, okay, and we want this function to be uh, less than, so it's going to be on that side of there, and now I'm going to do the other one, let's do this one, I'll do it in green, so let's see, so I have 5x, 16x is 16 over 5, that's 3 and a fifth, so 3 and a fifth for the x right about there. And then 2y is 16, and y is positive 8 right there. And if I graph that one, it looks like this. Once again, it's a less than symbol, so less than for that one underneath. So my shaded in area, let's do it in blue. It has to be under the pink and under the green, so it's going to be here, somewhere in this area here is where I need it to be. And I'm going to look at the point 2 comma 4. So 2, 4 is right there. 
and it is not below. That's slightly above that green line. So this is false, does not meet. So does this satisfy? No, it does not. Okay, make sure when you have these questions, you answer the question. Next up, let's solve it algebraically. Okay, so I'll do it. I'll do it in the same colors. So 2x minus 3y less than 8. And the other equation was 5x plus 2y less than 16. Okay, and our point was 2, 4. Okay, so here we go. 2 times something, subtract 3 times something should be less than 8. And the point was x2 and y is 4. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 take away 6 should be less than 8. You notice that I, I keep carrying everything down here and I just do all the math, but I leave it as a full equation with the sign here. 4 take away 6, negative 2 less than 8. And I see this and I go, oh, that's awesome. That's a true statement. But I'm not done because it's a system of equations. And when you have a system of equations, you have to check it for the entire system. So you have to check it for every one of the functions or the equations that you have. So I've got to put the values in here for each. So here we go. I've got 5x plus 2y less than 16. I put my 2 and my 4. I have 10 plus 8 less than 16. 18 is less than 16. Hold it now. 18 is not less than 16. That is false. So for this function to satisfy it, all of them have to be true. And it's not. So once again, we know that it does not meet the system of equations. Okay, right there. So there we go. There's how we do a test point for a system of equations. The previous one I did in slope intercept form. This one I did in standard form. And we've got inequalities and we did one with equalities as well. So I can use a test point to help me see if I actually did my graph correctly. And I, I like to do this uh, very quickly. Um, so here I've got a function and we talked about, okay, I got a negative and I got y's on the wrong side. It should probably be over there. I got this less than symbol. Um, I, I just get sometimes a little bit confused whether or not it's above, below, and so on, okay? So first we just have to make sure we graph this properly. So I'm gonna go negative four, oops, that's not very clean. Negative four X plus two greater than y hmm did i mess up my sign i think i think i should have changed my sign i didn't show you that trick before but when you go with a negative what you do is you change it you reverse it so there we go anyway let's just see if i got this right so there's my two go down four two three four over one let's go down again one two three four over one two, three, four over one. Okay, so there's my line. And um, once again, that should be a dashed line. I'll go with black for a change. There we go. Okay, so there it is. And now I'm like, okay, less than, but huh, which side should I be on? Okay, hmm, confusing. You know, I had the negative in my original function. I had a greater than sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shade in. I'm going to pick a side. I'm going to pick a side. Okay, let's see. Uh, I don't know. Let's go over here. Let's say I think this is the right area. Okay. What I can do is I can test a couple points and see if I got it right. And if I did, then I shade it right. If I didn't, I just have to erase that and shade somewhere else. Let's pick a nice easy one. I always go for the point zero, zero. That's one test point. That should give me a false. Zero, zero should give me a false. And how about nine, zero should give me a true. I'm gonna go back and use my original equation, okay? 
So this should be a true. So I'm going to go 4 times 0, take away 2, should be greater than negative 0, because that's my x and my y. Okay? And let's see. So this is going to be 4 times 0, which is 0. And that's the reason you use 0. It's just so easy. Uh, 4 times 0 is 0. So this is negative 2 greater than 0. Hmm. That's false. And I wanted it to be false. So maybe that's right. I'm just going to check one more point. I'm going to check the 9 over here. Let's try a different color. Uh, let's go black. Uh, so I'm going to go 4 times 9. Take away 2 should be greater than negative 0, which is just 0. Okay. So... So 4 times 9, that's 36 take away 2 should be bigger than 0. 34 should be bigger than 0. And oh, look at that. That is true. And so I had two test points. 0, 0 should have been false. And 9, 0 should have been true. Awesome.